So on my end, I can't see the game. Give me a second. I'm worried I might have screwed something up. Can you guys see the game? I think you can. Yeah, I think we're good, actually. It's fine. I'm overthinking it. Hell yeah, Rockhawks team. Unlimited. Oh. I'm sorry, buddy. I mean, thank you for the thought. I'll, I'll figure it out. But in the meantime, you give me your support, and that means a hell, a hell of a lot to me, too. So thank you, buddy. Uh, I may not be super good at the Streamlabs stuff yet. Like, I'm pretty happy with you know, the little pop-ups and the bits thing and the subscriptions. I've, I'll be honest, I've done a lot of that with Pat and Strident's help uh, and a few other people. Uh, but I may still have to work some kinks out. That's for Elena. I don't understand bits much either. There's a conversion rate there, and it's like you have to convert to US dollars, then Canadian dollars, but then rupees. I always feel weird taking off my glasses around people. I don't know, because my eyes, I've worn glasses since like the second grade, so if I take off glasses, it's like, I can't see. But hi, by the way. Happy Friday! Super happy. It's fun to have a Friday off from work. Yeah, let's see here. Just set this up. Uh, there we go. That's good. I did the tweet already. And unlimited subscribed at tier one for two months. It works now, buddy. Thank you, man. Ah. Or girl. Or whatever you, you, you all are. Because actually, you all, what you all are to me is just good pals and I mean that that's not just like dismissive like you know it's like I love Pat I love Paige I love a lot of my friends I don't get to see them as much as I'd like because everyone's like you know doing adult stuff so you guys are my other friends now but not so much that uh, I will uh, you can borrow my vacuum cleaner because no I've had too many bad experiences with never getting those back sorry just trust issues there that's actually true by the way like I have a a vacuum I never got back from somewhere. And that ugh, annoys me. It was, it's a long story, Elena, but it's like... All I'm going to say is... If you know somebody... That you would be like, hey, I'll do anything to help you out. You, you're going to get some weird requests. More than you think. Anyway. I've known people want to borrow computers, too. Like, hey... My laptop's broken, and like I have a thesis due, and I don't have the money for one now. Can I borrow like your computer or come work at your place? And that's usually, that's fine if you want to come and use my computer. That's fine. That's great. But like I'm not gonna bring my tower to you. Okay, this is gonna continue escalating, Elena. So yes, I you can't, like you can't borrow a couch. I don't think so. Anyway, all right. Now we should start to open the game. Also, to be fair, my vacuum, it was one of those kind of, like, it was almost one of those Swiffer vacuums. I don't know why I'm doing this, eating soup, but it was not a very, it was not a large vacuum. Ace Attorney! Yay! Let's, uh, let's play some lawyer games. I wonder if that painting in the background, like, you see weird paintings in this game sometimes. I wonder if they're based off real paintings. I can't imagine they are. Like they have to be, or if they are, they're like public domain. Because I, I can't imagine they want to, you know, pay for rights and stuff. What do I? I really should clean my glasses properly. They never get super clean with us using the shirt. All right. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm gonna mess with the noise a bit. I think it's good for you guys, but I wanna, for me, it's a little on the loud side. I can't hear myself. I think that's good. All right, perfect. Let me know, as always, guys, because number one priority here is your entertainment. Let me know if anything's wrong with the video or audio. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yeah? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, that's kind of actually how real... Well, wait, no, innocent until proven guilty. Like, she's going a bit too hard in the other direction, actually. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. Bam. I guess. I believe that it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Can't count on Maya to be like, hey, perjury, perjury's fun. Everybody, let's do a perjury. Wait, it wasn't perjury, it was contempt of court that she was, uh, that she was, uh, accused of. Just checking something. Yeah, you guys, that yeah, picture's good. Oh, wait, hold on a second. There we go. Come on, Dickie. Hey, thanks, pal. All right. The law is complicated. I know people who have studied law and are actual lawyers working in law, and it is far more complicated than this game makes it out to be, which I'm guessing none of you are very surprised to hear. Damn. I always forget that uh, uh, she had the Magatama on her necklace. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Like some kind of lawyer. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Did I mention I can channel spirits too? No? Well, oh, shit. Okay. Yes, of course, from 10 a.m. I can't believe a Game of Thrones ended like that. Oh my god, it sucked. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lena Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. Remember that gun? It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. How do you keep the lights on, Phoenix? Like, do you get paid like a million per trial? I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Yeah. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. Judgment is to be made here in our hands, not those of anyone else. Give me your hands, Nick. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Hey, imagine Dusto! Yeah, fucking Edgeworth. That's what a lot of people are thinking about now because he's pretty and handsome. Chief Prosecutor, Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office. In the prosecutor's office lot. I mean, parking... Eh, whatever. Wow. He's much more forceful in person. Jesus Christ, girl. I, s I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. Weird. However, she will not pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. That almost... That almost seems like that's not a thing. That's not a good thing. No, whatever. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Ridgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Ms. Angel Star, to the stand. <sighs> the cough of queen. With the donut on, with the cheeseburger on her head. Hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho! Caviar? I've never even caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Caviar is good. I like caviar. It's like, I eat it on sushi. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Yeah, there she is. Jesus Christ, Elena. Uh, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? I don't know what voice I'm doing for anymore. I, I, this has stretched my abilities. I may have to, I may just change voices for her all the time. Like, because she's always, you know, coughing up. Eh. It's too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how's it taste? Mm, 
I'm kind of doing a bit of a diner waitress thing. So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Oh. Name. Profession. Now. Bloosh. Me. The name's Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. I hope my... I hope my parents never see this. He's like, why is our son just freaking out and having multiple voices while playing a video game in front of people? Edgeworth is awfully professional. You know, despite all the accusations of, uh... Stuff. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Mmm. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. We're gonna let that one sit in for a bit. Uh huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Ms. Angelstar was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. Wh what? Miss Star was a detective? Ah! I knew who you are. Cough up. Cough up. Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with your description, Miss Star. Yeah, uh, imagine, it, uh, it was like a weird, um, it's definitely Tristan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. That, that's, I didn't realize it at first when I started doing the voice, but that's totally, after like a, a few hours, I was like, oh, that's what I'm doing, okay. And yeah, no, she, she cop, she popo. Hey, Mel. My voice gives me super strength. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot of the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I'm so sassy when I do this voice. I just want to be like... I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? Yeah, fuck visitors. Prosecutors for life. How do you do a pros... What's, what would the prosecutor hand sign be? You know what? I might accidentally do something offensive. Never mind. The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with his knife and went to drive the body out. Badass knife, that's what it is. It's a very sassy lady. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness, Yug? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. It's very sassy. Wait, is this is this P the right way? It's P for prosecutor, and then it'd be D for defense. Wait, you know I'll, I'll figure that out. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. I guess even if she's not a cop, she can make a citizen's arrest. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Oh, I was doing... I thought I was doing Kermit at first, but yeah, I ended up doing Tristan. It, it kind of oscillates between the two. Ah, excuse me, I burped. Will, Mr. Wright? Um, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. So much shade gets thrown in this courtroom people are like hey you're you're under arrest for murder and the defense attorney be like yeah your mother's under arrest for for, for sex 
too much. Bam. It's like this is the kind of courtroom it is. Sex too much. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? Why? Why does everyone talk like this? This should be a nice civil courtroom. Oh, I have gunk in my eye. Uh, I washed my face before, but it's, I have so much face, it's hard to wash. If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Who is fucking... Wait, are they talking about me? Like, whose side are you on? Come on. The witness's account. Uh, I'm close here. There we go. I'm so big that I just can just scoop and move my couch. Like, my, my, my lower body is much more powerful than my upper body. Don't look too much into that. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something... Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. I can't help it. I'm not doing it on purpose. Damn! Okay, hold on. I wasn't expecting, like, the dark hado here. Like, look at this. Oh, wow. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor stand next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. The pointy tip. And you're like, yeah, this is, this is a bad, this is, this is fucking stabbing. That is like, she was not fucking around. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than... The point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how's it feel to be so utterly crushed? I, I'm, I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. I don't know where that coat comes from. I'm too young. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Once you have to cross-examine people who are, like, the best at law stuff, it's it's always tough. Like, they're very good. I'm lucky I didn't have to cross-examine Von Karma. Like, he probably would have been a fucking nightmare. Really. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Look at, this, look at him sipping that tea. Given that they're used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Also, the more I do this accent, the more it sounds like I have bronchitis. Er. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt I'd found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by them prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Oh, somebody was fired. Now I'm being sassy because of me. Laid off? She was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Except for all the shade I've been throwing at prosecutors and talking about how I got fired at my job for some reason. I, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Like, you, you, I, I, you guys are thinking about this way more than I have. I look at a character and I let the character come into me and I just let... That came out weird. Never mind. Very well. You may continue, Ms. Star. I feel that his voice is very fitting because he's a doofus, but I love him. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Did that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Hey, man. 2019, live your best life. Care to join? Mm. 
The yet another boyfriend is still open for applicants. Hey, Nerm. I mean... I mean... As long as everybody's... Anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Also, I think the judge is married. I think that comes up in later games. I forget. Note to self. The judge had to think before replying. The security guard room is in the lobby in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. And that would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like, how would you say? Oh yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. What? What does that even... What does that even mean, lady? I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's intuition... Wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A young cheese. A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Why is every detective in this city like some kind of weird Old West enthusiast? Hmm. Then I must be hard yellowed and sharp as a tech. Oh, am I? Yeah, with the... <clears throat> yeah, with the order of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. By Garish Carr, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife for which he was the victim of stab was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Oh man, that guy's got a cool knife. Hmm, what an odd case this is. You know, if I were to this judge, and the fact that so many of my lawyers and defense defense attorneys and, and, and prosecutors are actually directly involved in most of these cases, I'd start asking why there are not other lawyers on these cases. But maybe that's just me, trying to add some semblance of sanity here. Hey, Valdrick. Yeah, it is weird. And the person you saw, you were sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further... Alright, let's try that again. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness. In your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. Duh. You might want to keep them silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to, to risk the consequences of doubting me. Is that like a fucking threat to the lawyer? I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That literally just threatened me on the stand. That, that was inspiring and not at all you threatening a lawyer in the courts. I can't. I must talk sense. I believe I've heard that tag where else line. Could you cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Well, this looks bad. This looks super bad. Oh no. A, fo a photograph. You took this? 
You guys hear that? That's the music that's like, oh no. Ow, what am I, oh boy, okay. The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snapped. Pokemon snap. I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. Why? 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 That makes no sense. That's weird. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging, around, hanging it around your neck. Right. Witness. Why am I only seeing this photograph just now? Yeah. Yeah. You think I'd show it to you? A prosecutor? Think again. Mm. Uh. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Will, these, these most certainly the defendant. Crime photo added to the court record. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So. What was the defendant doing at the time? Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. Well, no. Okay. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You, you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I, I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So, the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Ooh, something I ate is not sitting well with me. But for you, I'll power on. Too late. Yeah. The next moment... The chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon using the raging demon. Look at the, look at the lines. Look at the, look, look at her. She's like, oh my god. Those lot, those eyes. Jeez. Also, it looks like she's killing Inspector Gadget. Like, does anyone else not? I, I, I see. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mister Wright. We can make it. Stop quoting Monty Python. It's not helping. We're not... You, you said that before. A anything else? Scientifically speaking, Ms. Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. But what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that! Alright, so we're gonna save and I'm gonna review the court records because now we're at a point where we've pressed everything once. Um, let's see here. Okay. Alright, so now as new a day like this would come, I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox with my boyfriend. When I sent something, which I was my. Okay, on through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. Chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her hands. In her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip knife to Detective Goodman's chest. Right. So now let's uh, review the evidence and. Uh... Okay. Now, now uh, let's check. Victim's blood, right? Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. 
And there's a scary thought. Like I have a camo cravat or something. Okay, nothing we can use on the knife. If she was in B block, she'd still have no problem seeing it. Yeah, and there'd be no prints because she's shown wearing gloves here. Oh, this I remember this is gonna be a tricky case. Give it a shot. There's gonna be a little trial and error in this one, guys. Sorry. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife. As far as he said, yes. I swear it on my, fi my, my finest salmon swirl lunch. Comes with a whole bottle of salmon. Hmm. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. I'm not gonna do that joke anymore. The official Ace Attorney Twitter did the joke too, so I think they've you know they won. They've won in that one. This is a photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your tuts? Thoughts? Ooh, yeah, thoughts. Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. We usually yell it and get really pumped about it. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken by the, this was taken the moment after the stabbing. A and how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? It's a black and white photograph. Oh yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Oh wait, no problem, except you. No, uh -huh. Mr. Wright, are you just gonna sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ah, uh, you got a better idea? I just wonder why I keep getting notifications. I'm busy talking to my friends and doing crime law things. Crime law things. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, that's fine. No, I don't need to know the weather right now. The judge is the judge is a nice guy. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it. If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have the time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was... Man, every time I see it. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Yeah, that's not up to you to... Pre-medicated? Pre 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 How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves, made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Warg! Oh man, it's just like, it's just like OJ. 
Those gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves, of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ah. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, mister. This is bad. She's got them thinking it was all planned. She can prove this claim. The trial's already over. Got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only flesh wound? Okay. Alright, so now we gotta look for evidence that kind of shows it was not premeditated. Hey, another puppy! You guys, what are you, what are you kids talking about? You kids behaving? Yeah, you're good. You're good kids. Good kids. I'm gonna send you to college. Yeah. Alright, uh, let's see. Let's look at, uh... It's a pink princess strap. Oh my god, just like just like mine. These are hard to come by, you know. I see the series is as popular as ever with the kids. Flip. I used to love doing that. There's no need to push this again. What's wrong? You look like I do during the finals. Never mind. It, it's nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. I mean, I could present this as, like, why would she use someone else's knife? Or this as the, you know, like, you know, the car just got there. You can examine almost everything in this case. 1712, this is the date of the day of the crime. The murder took place three minutes after Edgeworth parked his car. Just goes to show what will happen if you run, never run a red light. Actually, guys, uh, I'm just going to put myself on BRB for a second. Uh, I'm sorry. I just got a message. I, th I need to make a quick phone call. Uh, just give me a few minutes really quick. Sorry about that, guys. I'll be right back, I promise. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to get a snack and uh, just tell yourself you're awesome because you are. You're awesome. I'll be right back.
Okay, we're back. Thank you guys. Sorry about that. Today, today is adulting day, and I ha I had to leave a lot of messages and send emails to book appointments, and I didn't think you guys would be very entertained by hearing me speak to my family doctor's office in French. So, thanks for that. I also put some cold water on my face because I was admittedly my stomach's a little bothered, but yeah, it's probably it's probably nothing. All right, here's All right so. This is all I can think of right now, where there's gonna probably be a little bit of trial and error. Yeah, no, it's not. This evidence clearly states, how exactly are that evidence statement not related? They aren't, but are they? Yeah. Safe scum because I'm weirdo. This? Oh, it's the knife, okay. Oh. Hmm. Witness. I like touching my hair. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunch boxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife. Let's go the couch with my butt a bit. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. See, now that I'm sitting back, yeah, I'm good. I'm centered. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Indeed, it is my knife. Oh, man, it was so cool. He's got a big knife. What's with this case? A bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there. Ben is the chief prosecutor, right? Mommy, our prosecutor's bad people. Yes, sweetie, it's there. The defense has request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. Was that, Rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she has, was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Ow. Mmm. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. I don't know what that is. But that's good advice. If you're going to murder, do it. Do it good. Don't murder. Please don't murder. Uh, wow! Mm. Hey, who brings a kid to a murder trial? <sighs> Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Oh, shit. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. <laughs> What? What? I'm not hungry. I don't want... I do like pie, though. I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Max, actually, that's exactly what I was like. A tiny, stumpy child? I know a guy like that. Not over such a trifling detail. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah! Humbug. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. Oh. The defendant Lana Sky murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. Thought? How dare you? 
How dare you? How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. All right, she's letting her ego get into it. This is good. This is good. Yes, I was making fun of Pat, who I love very dearly. He's a good friend. Uh... Yeah, Voldrick, you know what? That's good stuff. That's a good point. Oh okay, yeah, she she uh now she's gonna make she's gonna make mistakes. Cause her ego bruised. Really now. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could have drive that human machine to plunge the knife again and again. Oh, angel cakes, come on. I don't, I'm going to press anyway because I want you guys to get the maximum content out of this. But you guys saw it too. You guys saw it too. You guys are smart like me. We're smart. We're good detective lawyers, law detectives. We know what's up. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I order... <clears throat> oh my. So if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? I mean, if he's over 30 minutes, you can technically kill your delivery boy. That's the slogan. That's the slogan at, uh, at, at Pizza Murder. It's pizza in under 30 minutes or kill your delivery boy. It's really... It's not a popular... It's not a popular deal. Cheesy bread's good. In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness... You said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, all right, and it's you. Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. You have no proof that Miss Guy called him there. You have no proof that she didn't, bitch. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? Thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, come on, get serious. Could have at least tried public phone first, at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. He's a cop. He's, well, I, he, of course, should be talking to a prosecutor. Witness? Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Oh, wait, you already, I already read that part. What kind of grudge? Like the like the original version, Juan, or the American version? With Sarah Michelle Gellar. Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. You're making shit up. Silence, bitch. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? Uh, how am I supposed to know? See? We agree that there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Forest. Uh, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. A 
human machine? That's a contradiction. Please. Can't you find a fault with something of substance, Mr. Wright? Note to self. Mr. Edgeworth's size smell like citrus fruit. I want to inhale. Just, I want to go up to his mouth and just sniff, sniff his breath right away. Um, you say again and again. How many times did she stab him exactly? We often say chopping through a thousand pieces, but we don't actually mean a thousand pieces. What difference does it make if the deed is done? How come she's getting mad at me? Let's just say she stabbed him several times and leave it at that. She's very cute. She's she's very adorable. She's weird, but she's adorable. Leave it at that. This is a murder case, people. Mr. Wright, you should speak up if you have an objection, you know? I don't know why I gave her a Canadian accent for a second there. Miss Star has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off, which is why she fucked up. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder. Wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. One, two, three... And away we go. One knife wound? Huh. Say again, lady. So you say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. Thumb war. With my moth surprise, that's just, what is that? That's just a box full of moss. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. Oh my god, Edgeworth's gonna take care of this one. That's amazing. That's how, that's how hostile this prosecutor-witness relationship is. All right, let's... Is it just me, or do you guys see... Okay, you see... Oh, I can't believe this. You see Edgeworth's cravat? Do you notice one of the ruffle closest to the paper? Do you notice there's like a missing pixel? Is that my TV, or is that just like a little... I just noticed that. Do you guys see that? Like, zoom and enhance, but I think you'll see it. Also, I just noticed the way he holds the paper is super weird, too, actually. Anyway. The autopsy report states that the death was due to loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. I mean, hey, we all had weird crushes when we were young. Tia Carrera was... Anyway. What about my objection? No one noticed? I'm hot. I'm hot. Will witness? You got the crime scene set, right? That's not appetizing. Fork's cute, though. Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. At this point, if we've had to correct her testimony this many fucking times, like, why even bother anymore? Hey, Nicopole. She's got a lot of lunches. Like, I'm wondering, how are they refrigerated, too? Like, anyway. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Uh, 
Her red muffler looked like blood to me. And that's how ghastly the whole scene was. Alright. Muffler? I'm gonna have to press on that, actually. Her red muffler? Like a car? Yeah, it's like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. Oh, Jesus, alright. She's right. Miss Sky was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? Ooh, I like how this one comes into color. It's nice. But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. I can actually see it. A judge with a bib. This is why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. Actually... I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. Now, however, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Starr isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance. Chance for what, I wonder? Miss Starr has turned out to be a short timber. Okay, so that's. That's. So, let me take a look at something really quick. So, it's obviously this statement. Not wearing her scarf in the picture. Fuck you, bitch. Oh, I didn't. I missed the line. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. I'm sorry, I missed the line, guys, because I'm looking at you and I'm like, hey, look at all these cool people in my chat watching me play video game. Thank you. You're the best. I love you. She's not gonna like that. What? What do you say? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or a muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. I, I should just leave this courtroom. Like, let's just let them figure it out. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But but that that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Oh, no. Oh, boy. I'm going to leave that up there. Let that settle in. Ooh, Dory. Y'all are in for a good time. I'm telling you right now. Have mercy. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we're in for a good time, y'all. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. <laughs> what the fuck? I, it's, I'll admit, it's funnier because I'm doing the stupid voice. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, yeah. Edgeworth's about to get fucking killed, man. He's... In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chop lip? Liver? Like, I'm the one pointing this shit out. Like, honestly, you think... Which, I, actually, would Edgeworth be pointing this out proactively if it wasn't me? Anyway. But, but it was there, scoff. No, no, not that, but something red, really. Are you having... Are you having the vapors? Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Because you've been wrong about everything else, but we're still going to let you talk for some reason. Very well. Look at her. Just got her composure all back. I'm really proud of the judge voice. I think of all the voices I've done, I'm really happy. Um, Von Karma walk-in was good, but I was, my walk-in is terrible. Like, that fell apart almost immediately after. I do remember some things accurately, at least. I'm just taking it well. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your system stabs the... Your system? Yeah, you, the part where system of a down stabs the victim. 
The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Alright, here's where the arrest... How did she arrest him anyway if she was on the other side of the fence? Anyway, all right. Oh, yeah, remix. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Oh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance be futile. I'm basically a sassy board. Hey, Exile. It's not a, It's not linear. I can fail and start off from the last save, um, which is not a huge deal in a linear text-based adventure game. But... I don't, I don't want to make you guys, you know, not, I don't want to make you guys not have a good time. So I save a lot, because also saving is very fast in this game. And if I fuck up too much, I, you know, I save scum so that you guys don't end up seeing, which ironically does make you see a lot of the same content over and over. So no matter what, I failed you. I failed you and I'm sorry. <sighs> the stream is canceled. I'm going home. I'm already home. Okay. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. Basically the bad guy from Karate Kid. All right. Yeah. That's me, Angel Star. The snake lady. With an impossible top, now that I look at it, but anyway. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. Unless you're into that sort of thing. N no thanks, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into that. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. I like the idea that she's classifying us as Pokemon types or something. Yeah, she is a rice cake porn star. Angel star in... In um, what's a good rice cake porn star name? Uh, or rice in general? Was it like sashimi? Fucking because she, so she sees me. All right. Anyway, the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. I'm, I'm real swole, y'all. She knocked my hands on side, kicked over an old drum. Damn though. An, an oil drum? It's hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but she deadly. Like a predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rare. Rare. It's not more like an inkjet printer than a cat, but whatever. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix is into snakes. So, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. I don't know why I did that for a moment. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She's obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her. Ex oh, wait, I already heard this part. You say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Huh, maybe I should press her for more details. Oh yeah, I'm gonna press her. I'd like to see this on the floor plan, just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She has a visitor. She was a visitor. Thus, she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes? I'm, I can't believe I'm going to have to point out the obvious here. Is that correct, mister? Yes, that, that's right. Oh, okay, good. But 
but there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The Cough Up Queen, Lunch Lady Athlete indeed. That's a hell of a title. Would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence is about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. I don't like it. Anyway, all I heard her was, was say the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, the chief prosecutor was on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... Well, this could be... This could be dicey. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see? No, no, the court the court doesn't see, mister. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. How could you see that? It was behind the partition. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should of course add this testimony to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the court record. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. Like we all, guys, we all know. We all know, don't worry. I'll come back to it. But for now, getting you the content you deserve. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen, rookies. You've known the judge for years. Man, if, if you like the judge's voice this much, I am genuinely super happy. Oh no, Andrew W.K. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. Wow, if she did it behind the partition, that makes you look even stupider. I flew, and during that time you climbed- and during that time- <clears throat> wrong, let's, the third time's a try. And during that time you climbed over the chain link fence. Oh, hot, I mean, oh no. And then when I boldly grabbed her arm and I looked into her eyes and I could tell she was panting. I'm sorry guys, it's just an oddly dynamic picture. The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? She made to escape. Can you be more specific? She brushed us out my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a dollop of lard on a pate of foie gras. Huh? She even kicked over an oil drum at me, which further means that makes no sense, because the oil drums are on the other side of the partition. I am a good detective. An oil drum? There was an oil drum laying on its side at the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Hmm? What's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other? Ah! Uh, the parking lot entrance. That's right. It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent. More mysteries. Wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. 
So Miss Sky tried to run. I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. She a freak. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Ms. Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought that you'd be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Mm, oh, 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 things is getting sassy. Things is getting sassy. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Oh my, no. Ahem. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you could pos you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you're in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What wow! Oh man, look, she dropped all her lunchboxes. Order, order, what is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Lies! Sorry, I yelled. Grr. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you'll allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong, so I'm gonna save and scum if I do. The witness lied about... Yeah, I have to think. Yeah, I think it's one of these two. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Wait, that came out weird. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points into one direction. Ah, uh, this one might be tough. You think? It's highly likely. Your cavalier attitude stands in stark contrast to your feeble argument, Mr. Wright. Her being there wouldn't change a thing. Please, Mr. Wright, think before you... Sp okay, so I, I have a feeling it's the security office then. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly. Oh, it is there. Okay, good. Perfect no-death run, bitches. Oh, shit. Should have saved. You get to hear this rad song again. Don't worry. Uh, see, this is exactly what I want to avoid. There we go. Perfect. No, nobody. The, the concept of conflict and a conflict of interest doesn't exist. 
This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room is in the underground parking lot and is well positioned. I fucked that up, but whatever, we shall continue. Ooh. It's built on... It is built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But way there, there are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park it in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember it in your testimony. You said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star, bitch. How many years have I been the better a man to think that the tables could be turned? Wow, that's... Wow, what, what's wrong with you? Today a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. What is she talking about? Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Uh, Mr. Wright? Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make any sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. How could she have taken this photograph then if she's not on that side of the fence? That truth still stands. Objection. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Well, you saved the game like a giant wussy. Huh? M me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. <coughs> Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Angle of view. Why, the angle at which she saw the crime occur would change. The angle? What do you mean? Um, well, the security guard station is on the second floor, and, um, she would have sort of more of a 3D view of the crime. And this is important why? Um, really? Oh, I was really sure it was that. I was really sure it was Angle, actually. That's weird. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. Oh, something just happened. Yay, people are following me. Hooray, I'm happy. What she saw is not in question here. Sorry, I skipped that part, guys. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Will witness? You. Yes? You ordered the square wheels, right? Quality of my lunches has gone down from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with, with fresh poison bird jam to my boyfriend. 
Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He was in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass wall station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Oh, come on. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B block. It's quite a detour. Uh, <clears throat> it's quite a detour. Probably took me at least five minutes to get from to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? Wow, she's running fast in the heels. Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defense chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Oh, that does look good, actually. Fuck. Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? I think so. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about that. You can make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. Most box pastas are actually closer to seven to eight minutes. Uh, five... I've seen some, I think I've seen some brands of pasta that cook in five. So, maybe. But he's reaching a bit here. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A little bow tie pasta, that's cute. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Oh, don't don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. I mean, seen... But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Y Yarg. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of the testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. He's really not useful at all when you think about it. Yeah, everyone's throwing shade at her and she's kind of earned it at this point. Mr. Idworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed, we screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. I'm afraid that the cuff-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Oh. Miss Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? This other guy didn't pay for it. That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? Ah, uh, might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. W what was that? I is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Ms. Star. Ah. Uh. Oh, is this your jumbo lunchbox? I do like to eat three lunches at once. I, I mean, the judge. Woohoo! A triple dicker! Oh my god. Oh my god. You stupid, lovable idiot motherfucker. Alright. Alright. Let's give it a minute. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lone Slam motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she gonna pull out of her lunchbox this time? That sounds weird. Right. 
I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the scene of the crime. Crime scene. And now, to the manner of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. How do you have this? How do you have this and not the prosecution or the defense? This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. It's a good motto. Hey, I'm gonna try Lunchland. Witness, what is the meaning of this? Why is this first time I've heard of this evidence? I'm so thirsty, guys. I'm so sorry. I had um, I had a spicy lunch. Also, I'm hungry, and water water is good for when you're hungry. Almost as good as food. Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Ooh, ooh, damn. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself, which is. Of all the things we see people doing wrong in this court, this is this is basically vigilanteism, almost. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? Why are you surprised? This is really wrong. Yeah, this is a bad town. For... You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence, no evidence, uh, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. I is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim's shoe added to the court record. It's a sensible shoe, looks for classy, but also good for long walks. Got Lana's blood and Goodman's blood. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Yeah, that's fucking... Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim for my very own eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. You either live yourself, you ever die trying to become the hero or live yourself long enough to become the villain, y'all. Watch, watch Batman. Uh, this, when the suspect is admitting she did it. But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Really, Judge? There's a lot of... Okay, whatever. Let's just get this over with. And you found this shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. 
I wanted to make my myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with the shoe. I was afraid that someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you in your lunchbox bag, really. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next, and I'll have you arrested afterwards. So, you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert, even if it's brought by a weird, disgraced police officer who has no right being there. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other blood type, Matt, yeah, okay, yeah. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. Yeah, that's... That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between million types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow down any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. Hey, Alphonse. It's best. Thank you. I'm glad you're having fun. It's a chill stream. I mean, it gets a little hype, but for the most part, it's a chill stream. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? I mean, that kind of looks tasty. Some like it hot, Mr. Rock. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't have a problem with this shoe? Try it on. A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Uh, let's see here. Okay. It's blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Ah, there's blood on here, too. On the sole of the shoe? That's got to be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. Check something. Is the picture? I think we're good. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence a clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? 
Let's hear what Mr. Raid has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Okay, this is gonna make this might take a few tries. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Well, that's just flat out. That's just flat out a threat of violence. We're gonna ignore that, I guess, for now. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly contradict you about blood on the bottom of this shoe? Okay. Okay. Pretty sure it's the crime scene photo, but we're just gonna check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint. Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found on the scene of the crime? Uh huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. The con this contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because... We checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Oh snap, these guys are cool. Order, 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 whale witness. What, huh, I, huh, what? I don't, oh my, no. Great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked at the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspects. Chief Prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. They're gonna say that the spill from the oil drum washed away the prints. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Meow. I know I didn't have to say that again, but I did. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, Will? Was the oil drum empty? The old drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. With water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh, you don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. Warg! Man, that's... That ties... Uh, that ties things up quite nicely. Man, he's just so happy with everything. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tire quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the old drum to erase the telltale signs. Wow, that's a prosecutor's specialty. Erasing evidence. That reminds me. Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Will, I see no reason to prolong this trial. 
Mr. Wright, do something, please. W what? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But... Ooh. Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant Midlana Sky. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? This is going to be the dumbest face turn of all time. Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. Lunchbox. Another lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't care scare the cough of queen. Mm. <laughs> Look at this. A photograph. Holy shit, that is brutal. And yes, I see the muffler guys, don't worry. I had it just in case someone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Uh, Mr. Wright, wait. Look at the asphalt in this photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. You're racing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I, I guess I... I couldn't help after all. Uh, I think you did, actually, kiddo. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. She had a lot of evidence. Yeah, man. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Wait, am I a spirit medium too? Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Also, I'm haunting you. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. By the way, guys, I know Pat starts in about 10 uh, minutes or so. I definitely don't want you guys to miss that. There might be a bit of overlap, but I'll make sure to uh, wrap things up after this, uh, uh, after, you know, before the next investigation part. So don't worry about that. Uh, please watch us both and um, picture us being good friends, which we are. There we go. That's our boy. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I just hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can I, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it'll be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. The judge is fucking... Oh, really, Pat's, uh... oh, you pushed it back? Oh, okay, that's cool. All right, good. This trial isn't over. Until we each bleh, until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I gotta go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Oh, it's probably here, don't you think? No. 
when you point at something, at least remember to keep your eyes open. I believe he's trying to say that no one's falling for your bluffs, Mr. Wright. Open your eyes, Mr. Wright. Think scientifically. I guess it's the shoe, bro. Part of me feels like, okay, is it the asphalt here where the shoe should be? No? Okay, a little bit of trial and error, guys. Yeah, I, I guess it could be the muffler, but I don't know. The problem in this photograph is here. Oh, it is a muffler. Weird, I thought that would come into play later. Sorry, guys. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor. You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm, so what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Wh what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to the case. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court while I slap this paper. Slap it hard. Oh yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Oh, no. Yarg. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, woohoo. Yarg. Will, it seems you will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. We leave any questions unanswered here. We do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all of the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew. That was close. But... We made it. At least, for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute 30, 30 recess. It's lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry? To be continued. And with that, I do think that is a nice natural point to leave off. Because I am hungry. Like, I've been, like, they've been talking about... I haven't had dinner yet, and they've been talking about lunches, like, this whole goddamn time. So I could actually go for some food. Which I will put... I will put food in me. Food is good. But... But, hey, Atronium. Oh, my. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, Pat's going to be streaming in a little while, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, make sure to tell him that he should do funny voices like me and um, just be more like me. But I'm just kidding. I'm his idol. He's already always trying to be like me. Um, so I'll talk to you guys a bit later. I'll let you know when I'm... Uh, this is the only game I'm streaming for now, uh, but I do have some ideas in mind for the you know a game I can kind of uh, take care of take care of stream as alongside of this or when this is over because this is technically the last case even if it is a long one so you guys i hope you guys have a lovely rest of your friday wherever you are in the world i hope it's cool friday and a great weekend for you um i'll see you guys soon reach out to me on twitter if you want to talk or discuss um how you would stop crimes from happening i think we should stop crimes uh as long as we don't fuck it up so i'll talk to you guys later bye thanks again